Hello, viewers. Good day. In today's lecture, we are going to talk about the time value of money. We'll be looking into this lecture about that why the value of the money changes over time. To understand the value of the money, basically, first, we need to understand what is the concept of the value of money. The time value of the money is basically the concept that explains that why money available today is worth more than the same amount of money in the future. Now, why? This is because that the money that is available to you today can be invested or put to use in other ways. Like say, for example, you can use that money to pay your bills or make purchases and you can earn interest on grow or grow in the value over time. In contrast, the money that you are going to receive in the future is subject to a lot of uncertainty, inflation, and other factors that can decrease its value over time. For example, $100 received today can be invested and grow to $110 in one year's time if the interest rate is 10%. But $100 received a year from now will still be worth only $100 and won't have got any opportunity to earn any return on it. The relative concept for the time value of money is the present value of money. Why the present value of money concept actually matters. You know, like when you make investments, generally you make investments for the future. Generally, we get returns in the future. But we make investments today. So what actually is happening, that money is flowing out from, your, from our pocket today. But the benefit of that money is going to come in our pocket in the future. Now, what exactly are we trying to do here? We are trying to compare with uh, the money that is going to out of our pocket today with the money that is going to come into pocket in the future. They are not directly comparable because like say, for example, to the time basically that the investments takes to get your return may have a lot of troubles. Like say, for example, there could be a lot of uncertainties involved into that period. There are a lot of things that can change over time. The inflation rate in your country can change. The interest rates in your country can change. The business conditions in your country can change. So what exactly you are doing basically, you are basically, you know, like making investments today. But the return that you are going to get are not basically are not getting today. You are going to get in the future. So you are trying to compare today's outflows with futures inflows to just make them comparable. What exactly we do, we try to reduce or we try to discount the future value of money in today's terms. That particular concept in finance is called fi present value of money. For a formal definition, the present value of money is a way of thinking about how much money is worth today compared to the same amount of the money in the future. Like say, for example, if you are investing $100 today and you are getting a promise to get $110 in the future, now you will be trying to see that how much that $110 that you're going to get in the future worth today. That is what actually is the present value of the con present value of money the con uh, is, is all about. You know that the prices of things change over time. For example, the price of the candy bar may be different today than it was 10 years ago. So as everything, like say, for example, the electricity, the telecom, the communications, everything actually has got expensive over time. Similarly, the value of the money changes over time because things like inflation and the ability to invest on interest rate. Now, how do you calculate the present value of money? When you calculate the present value of money, you are trying to figure out how much that money would be worth today. Taking into account all those factors that, that may affect the value of the money in the future. So if you are offered $100 now or $100, $110 a year from now, you might choose to take $100 now because it is worth more today than $110 would be a year from now. That will depend on that at what rate of interest you can make actually invest. You can invest that money and how much more money you can earn over time as compared to the $110. Now, if you look at the concept of the future value of money, we are actually studying this future value calculation to understand the present value calculations. What happens? The present value calculation is the opposite of the future value calculation. Like say, for example, whatever money you invest today, it actually multiplies over time. Like say, for example, if the interest rate is 10%, $100 invested will actually be equal to $110 from your year from now. 
And that will become $121 two years from now and $130 to $3 three years from now. And similarly, like, you know, that will become $100 multiplied by 1 plus i to the power n in the future. Now, this, what does this timeline actually tell you? This tells you about what actually are you happy about? Like, say, for example, $100 today. Having $100 today actually makes you as happy as $110 a year from now. Having $100 today will make you as much happy as much $121 from two years, two years from now. Similarly, $133 two years from now. And similarly, 1 plus 0 0.01 multiplied by $100 to the power n, one n year from now. Now, if you look at the formula for the present value concept, the present value is the opposite of the future value. Like say, for example, in the future value, we multiply the present value or the present principal amount with one plus i to the power n. But to find out the future present value, we divide the future value or the cash flows that we are going to get in the future by one plus i to the power n. Why do we do that? We are actually trying to discount the fact the value by the factor one plus i to the power n. We are trying to see like, you know, that how much the money that you're going to get in the future worth today. And why are we doing that? Because we are doing it because we want to compare today's outflows with today's inflows. This particular present value concept will tell you that how much inflows are you going to get today against the money that you are going to invest today. All right. So the calculation of the present value of money involves taking into account the time value of money or the fact that money received in the future is worth less than the, the same amount of money received today. The formula, as we have seen, is equal to, is, is actually like the present value is equal to the future values or the cash flows divided by one plus R or one plus I to the power N. So that basically tells you like, you know, uh, what you cannot do is like, you know, this is what basically is the timeline for the present value. Like say, for example, you cannot directly compare the payment schedule with the different periods in time. So what is actually telling you, like say, for example, $100 today, the future value of the $100 after one year will be equal to $100 divided by one plus I to the power one. From two years from now will be equal to $100 divided by one plus I to the power two. And similarly, one N years from now will be equal to $100 divided by one plus I to the power N. Now, the factor that we actually use to discount the, the future values of money or the future cash flows is called the discount rate. The discount rate is a very involved concept. It's not a very easy concept. Like, you know, the discount rate actually involves the risk-free rate. The base rate in the discount rate is a risk-free rate. Why do we take the risk-free rate is a rate on the government bonds? If you are actually say, for example, why do we take that discount rate? Actually, from the discount, the discount rate, you compare your values of the returns from your current investments, from the, the investments in some other, other kind of the bonds or ventures. Like say, for example, the safest investment that you may make, like, you know, as compared to the investments that you are making into the capital or in the machines could be like, you know, in the government bonds. The returns that you get from the government bond is risk-free. And on the top of that, you also expect to get premium. So that premium basically tells you that what actually may be the inflation rate in your country and what actually are the other uncertainties you are facing. Now, if you look into details about the concept of the discount rate, the discount rate typically includes the risk-free returns along with additional premium for adjustments to account for various risks and uncertainties associated with the future cash flows. As you have seen, like, you know, that in this particular example, when you are actually making the calculation of the future value, in the future value, one plus I is a recount rate. It is telling you that at what rate your money is growing over time. The discount rate tells you that at what value your money is decreasing from the future into today. So this discount rate includes a lot of factors. Like, say, for example, it includes the, the risk-free rate initially and it also includes all the risks that you take to make investments in the future again the interest rate in the future value calculation is called the recount rate or the multiple rate it tells you that at what rate your money is going to multiply in the future 
The discount rate tells you that at what rate your future value is going to decrease its value in the present. So this discount rate actually on the top of this risk-free rate, why actually we start with a risk-free rate? The risk-free rate is a rate at which is you may invest if you are not investing into the venture. The risk-free rate is the rate of return that can be earned on investments with no risk of default, such as a U.S. Treasury bond. This is often used as a starting point for determining the discount rates as it represents the minimum rate of return an investor should expect to earn for taking on no risk. But if you are taking more risk, you basically have to have more returns. So if an investor is considering investments in a very high risk stock, the discount rate may include higher risk premium for a, as compared to for the low risk bond. This is because the higher risk associated with the stocks would require a higher rate of return to compensate the additional return risk that actually an investor is going to take. So in this particular lecture, what we have learned, we have learned the time value of money and the present value of money. We, when we make investments, we should always be able to compare the opportunity cost of that investment, the opportunity cost involves. Like say, for example, the way actually else you can make invest uh, this money and what return you can get from other places. And when you make investments, what kind of risks you take, they all actually reduce your value of money in the future. So to sum up, the time value of money tells you that how much your money Actually, why your money loses your value over time and why actually we have told you that the money loses your time because of uncertainty, because of inflation, because of the return or the interest rate lost on the returns or the income of that particular investments. Thank you for joining us.